Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Python programming tutorial. We're still looking at PyEnchant, or when we import the module just Enchant, and that's really nice because we can create these dictionary objects that pretty much, I don't know, act as a real dictionary, right? We're able to test if words actually exist, like, hello, does that word exist? And yeah, it does. Or we can actually get something like a, a wrong word and say it, that doesn't exist. From there, we can actually determine uh, certain suggestions for that mistyped word or misspelled word and see what else we could we be looking at there. We were looking at personal word lists and stuff like that. So the real use with the Enchant module comes with checking if we have an English word or actually getting other suggestions. But this is kind of doing this one at a time, right? It's only checking individual words. I want a little bit more functionality to actually get us an entire paragraph or sentences or pages of text that we might want to spell check. So the documentation talks about this. There is a method of checking entire blocks of chat of of text, sorry. So here we go. While the enchant dictionary objects are useful for spell checking individual words, they cannot be used directly to check, for example, a whole paragraph. So the module enchant.checker provides a class spell checker which is designed to do just this, and handle that task. So, they're handled and created kind of the same way as our dictionary objects. You pass in a language tag, and then you're ready to roll. Now, it uses an interesting method and function called setText, and there is, of course, getText to see what you've passed in. And this is the text that's going to be looked at. It's going to be examined and checked over by the object. Now, it's kind of used as an iterator that looks through all of the spelling mistakes in the text that you give it. So, Here's a simple example that they show us, and uh, let's try and build this all on our own as well. Let's, from enchant.checker, let's import that class, spell checker. So now let's create s equals uh, spell checker, right? Or it doesn't really matter what variable name we give it, but it does take the language, and we want en underscore us, so we've got that dictionary, English dictionary for us, and then we'll give it text with this set text function. So real simple, set text. Hi, my name is John. Cool. Now, if you use um, dot space, of course, to uh, see what else, oh, sorry, dot and then control space to kind of autocomplete and see what more you can do here with this object, there is the get text function, and that will return what it's been given. And then you can play a little bit more here next, but that's kind of working as like our uh, iterator, right? Replace, replace always, and actually word is what we're seeing that we would have an error there. And uh, we haven't started to loop through it, so it's not going to show us those yet, and word position would get the position there as well. So, in the example that they give, they do loop through the spell checker object. For every error in there, it's going to get an error word, so you can see what is spelled wrong. So let's do this. Let's say for error in s, print misspelled word, and then s, or error, sorry, error.word. And there is apparently nothing misspelled. So, okay, hi, H-Y, must be, actually be a word. Let's take a look here. Check. We can work with hi. Oh, is capital H-Y? Okay, apparently that is a thing. Oh, I'm really curious now. Not cursor or funkel. What's hi? Oh. Oh, it's a wonderful dialect of Lisp that's part of Python. That's pretty nifty. Well, maybe I'll have to look at that later. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's use a different text, right? Let's do s dot set text. This has some typos. <laughs> I should have said has, but I actually wrote have. All right. So now we can run our loop for error in s. And hey, there's a misspelled word, thigios. Truly, truly, I say to you, Thagios. So, and now, of course, I want to say if s.word will tell us, oh yeah, there's Thagios, and s.word position 
would give us the position of that misspelled word. Now, if we had multiple in here, let's say um, so typos. I hope that's not a word. <laughs> okay, yeah, misspelled word, the gyos, and so. So now we've got s dot word, which is so, which was the last one that we saw, and s dot word position. So 12. 12 places into the string, we have SOE, or so. Now, where does our s dot next come into play? It looks like we're all done with our iteration, so s dot next is going to kind of throw an error at us. Will it bring us back to where we need to go? No, it won't. Okay. Is there any way we can get back to where we were? Set offset? Maybe. Let's take a look. I wanted you to see that uh, description here. Set the offset of the tokenization routine. So if I set offset 0, now if I do s.next, no, it's still not going to get us anywhere. We might have to just restart the text and, uh, yeah, probably reset the text. 12. I don't even know what I just tried to write there. We can run it manually with our iterator. I'm kind of curious what this object is, so let's kind of explore here. P dot word. Okay, so I missed over it. The first one that I ran that I didn't create an object on must have been Hilo. And then Aya, this next one, is what we're at. Now if I do p.word again, after I've created move to the next error, we're going to get or, and that's not a word, and it found that one. But of course we can just run through our actual loop, which is a much better way of testing for these things. Okay. That's enough of me talking about those. Let's go back to our documentation and see what else we can do. There is, of course, uh, a functionality or a method there that changes the way we filter through certain words. Can we, can we ignore some words? And there are lists of filters that we can pass in as keyword arguments, and we can actually import them from the Enchant tokenize module, like an email filter or a URL filter. So let's try and build this from enchant.tokenize let's import email filter and URL filter and now let's actually make that checker object again spell checker with the language and US and for tokenizers I think that's an option there or filters it's a keyword. Okay, filters equals none. Filters, we supply an array of email filter and URL filter. Now we can set the text. I need to get an email from me at metrocast.net. And his website is http. Dot, or google.com. Now for error in s, print misspelled word. Error dot word, and the only thing that we see wrong because of our email filter and our URL filter, me and metrocast.net, uh, along with the HTTP URL, aren't treated as errors since we set up those filters. But g, obviously what should have been get, since that, mis that is misspelled, our spell checker found that and saw that that was the error there. So, cool. Um, we're good. <laughs> I think that's all I really wanted to show you in this tutorial. Um, checking through... Uh, a whole string with multiple words, and of course you could have this load an entire paragraph or a whole friggin' text file if you wanted it to, and you can loop through the errors. Uh, find the word and the word position as to where those things are, and then if you want to set up some filters, you can do that. There are totally other filters. I'm kinda curious what other filters there are. Let's actually import enchant.tokenize 
as filters. Now filters dot wiki word filter, URL filter. Was there email filter up there? Email filter. Okay, so those are the only three that I see so far. But and of course you can read more about that in the documentation if you're curious. But you've got that option, and I hope I was able to walk you through this segment of the spell checker and a few of the filter functionality. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next tutorial.